Good evening, everyone. I'm Stephen Sampal, an ordained reverend for South Church. I'm a chaplain for South Church, a priest for South Church. I'm also a preceptor of South Church. I'm also a preacher at South Church. I have a doctor in divinity, doctor in humanitarianism, doctor in ministry, doctor in physics, all honored, of course, I'm a professor of theology. Today, I will be reading you chapter 5 of Matthew. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated with disciples, came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under foot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. So, in and of itself is... Be careful how you treat others. Especially, more importantly, do not let your anger control you. For as when it comes down to my last sermon concerning spiritual enthrallment, again, the, the spirit of anger is not of God, when it's in people especially. For, again, Lucifer uses us with hatred and hearts of unspeakable evils, and we continually see this proven irrevocably. So when it comes to calling people idiots, fools, and everything else, again, you as the person are cursing them, and God specifically says, especially Jesus specifically says, do not do this. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled with your brother, to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. You can be angry, of course, but do not sin, so do not harm another person, especially with that anger. And don't let the sun go down in your anger, of course. And reconcile with the people you are angry with. Find peace. This is what Jesus is telling everyone. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, the judge hand you over to the officer, and you will be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not commit adultery. 
But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you than one of your members perish, than for your whole body be cast into hell. So, so that meme comes into mind where the where Jesus says, uh, where the disciple says, "I'm sinning, Lord. I've had this lust for a woman." And Jesus says, "Yeah." Uh, Tough break, bro. Why don't you gouge out that eye of yours? <clears throat> and if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you than one of your members perish and your whole body be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said. Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it is said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your own head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to see you and takes away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect. So in and of itself, you are to love your neighbors as yourself, and you are to love your enemies, especially with unqualified love. Unqualified because in human understanding they do not deserve, but when it comes to God and comes to Jesus, he commands us to because he loves us all the same. And we are to love others exactly as that. Okay, and I'm going to close. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. I just ask that you continue to be with everyone, Lord. Give people strength who need strength, love who need love. Healing to those who need healing, though. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, especially, Lord. I just pray that you Help those in need, Lord. I just pray when it comes to racist, xenophobes, uh, extremists, everyone who is of hatred, Lord, I just pray that they repent and atone, that you change their hate to love, Lord. And I know you can do this, Lord. And when it comes to change, at the end of the day, it is only because of you and through you that there can be change. But we have to do our best to make this world, this fallen world, into a new kingdom. And we can only do this through peace and through love. Anyways, everyone, stay safe and God bless.
and back for part two. So when it came to Matthew chapter five, we were talking about uh, pretty much the Sermon on the Mount. We were talking about the Beatitudes, which I will actually be doing a reading of concerning that chapter from chapter six of, of course, the Cost of Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. So continuing, uh, pastoral care for the sick. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Much more important than the health of our bodies is the peace and consolation of the presence of Jesus who can forgive our sins and reconcile us with God. Jesus came back to Capernaum after a lapse of several days and word got around that he was at home. At that they began to gather in great numbers. There was no longer any room for them even around the door. While he was delivering God's word to them, some people arrived bringing a paralyzed man to him. The four who carried him were unable to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they began to open up the roof of the spot where Jesus was. When they had made a hole, they let down the mat in which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes who were sitting there asking themselves, Why does a man talk in that way? He commits blasphemy. Who can forgive sins except God alone? Jesus was immediately aware of their reasoning, though they kept it to themselves, and he said to them, why do you harbor these thoughts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk again, that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I command you, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. The man stood and picked up his mat and went outside in the sight of everyone. They were awestruck. They gave their praise to God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, you raise your son's cross as a sign of victory and life. May all who share in his suffering find in these sacraments a source of fresh courage and healing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. God of compassion, you take every family under your care and know our physical and spiritual needs. Transform our weakness by the strength of your grace to confirm us in your covenant so that we may grow in faith and love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I ask that you continue to mitigate the deaths of the pandemic, Lord. I just pray that you protect uh, those working in medical, especially. I pray that you protect those who are the first responders. I pray that you protect everyone who is working in general, from CSR to construction to everyone in general, Lord, in food service. I just pray that you protect the customers they're in, Lord. And when it comes to the anti-vaxxers, anti-maskers, Lord, again, 99.5% of the deaths of COVID-19 these days are those who are anti-vaxxers. And I just pray that you protect them from their <sighs> it is the stuff that they do, Lord consequences there and the deaths that they are getting. That is what I pray. I pray to you. Open their eyes before it is too late for them. Because again, when it comes to being a former medic, I just can't stand by and do nothing. And this is why being a ordained reverend and everything, at least I get to be of service to you, Lord, and Prayer is power, so I am continually praying, Lord, concerning the safeguarding of the lives, Lord. I just pray that you bring healing to all those who need healing, Lord. Spiritual, emotional, physical, mental. I pray that you give strength to those who need strength, love to those who need love, Lord, and peace to those who need peace. You are in control, Lord, with everything that is happening, Lord. I just pray that you protect give guidance to those who need guidance, Lord, and I just pray that you bring peace and love to the world, here in the U.S. especially, Lord, I just pray that you bring unity. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen. Anyways, everyone, stay safe, and God bless.